Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Examining Interesting Maps Part 8 by Geography King. It's been quite a long time since I've watched his videos, but we're back and I enjoy his map videos, to be fair. I enjoy map videos in general, but his, his ones are always quite good. So yeah, we're going to watch another one. This has just been posted, so if you want to check his video out, links, up, links will be in the description to his video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's jump into this video. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon as well if you want to see some more videos. And yeah, let's jump into this. Howdy, it's Kyle with another installment of Examining Interesting Maps, where we look at some nice maps from around the web. This is part 8 in the series, and I will leave links to the other 7 in the description. But for this video, I, I wanted to announce that for the next one, I want to include viewer-made sure. maps. So if you have a nice map you would like to see maybe included in the next video, please send it to me by email. You can go to my channel homepage and under About, you can find my address and just send me a nice map. And maybe I'll include it for the next one. But yeah, let's get on with Examining Interesting Maps. Part 8. I want to start off with a map that's very timely as to when I'm posting this. No, it shows Cup, the best baby. results of each country. Wait, I'm recording this a day before the England-US game. And I think this will go up a day before the game as well. I think I'm going to live stream the like, a watch along or whatever. Because it's going to be fun. There's going to be oh, I'm going to be teasing people. Probably people teasing me in the chat. It's just going to be a laugh to be fair. But yeah, I'm excited for it. Because I reckon we're going to get a little win. But... Yeah, now I'm going to stream it if you care about that. Yeah, and that's for you who care. Three for soccer's World Cup. And of course, outside of the US and Canada, it's known as football, but this shows just how well these countries have done. As you can see, all of the champions have been either from Europe or South America. We are one of them. So many of these countries, although it was a very long time ago, that have made the World Cup have just gotten into it by qualifying, but not advanced. This map shows percent of households with no vehicle ownership based on 2020 census data. And there are some decent correlations here. Some of the dark red spots are going to be where you have an indigenous reservation. Of course, much of Alaska is going to be car free. There's also some dark red in the Mississippi Delta area and some of the poorer areas of rural Appalachia. And you can also see some of the big cities on this map, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, areas where you have a lot of people that don't have a car. Another city with a relatively low car ownership is Boston. And this map shows how some of the land has been reclaimed through the years. So the dark green areas are the original land of the Boston area. The areas highlighted in gray are the places that have been reclaimed since. You can see the harbor in there and all, but only that green area is the original land of the natural Boston area. Here's an old map of the San Francisco Bay Area highlighting the brand new Dumbarton Bridge. And why this is interesting for me is I didn't realize that Dumbarton Bridge is the oldest bridge over the bay. The Dumbarton Bridge opened up in 1927, the San Mateo Hayward Bridge a couple years later, and the Golden Gate Bridge 1937. And to this day, this is still the southernmost crossing of the San Francisco Bay. Here's a map showing which countries have the most islands. Sweet. And you'll see the top three I've are all in the same part of the world. There are just so many tiny little islands in some of these inlets, but they're not big islands. It is pretty nuts to me how the UK has so many for like this tiny area, but... Islands, but there's a huge number of them. So no real surprises as the countries that are on this list, but I think the big surprise is just how many more islands Sweden and Finland have. Yeah. I think there may have been some discrepancy in how Norway counts islands. There may actually be more islands in Norway than either Sweden or Finland, but either way, there are a ton of islands in this part of the world. This map shows how countries offer citizenship, and I know there are some errors on this map, so yes, I am showing... If born in the Blue Nations, you are automatically offered citizenship irresponsible irrespective of your parents nationality so that's blue if born in the red nations your citizenship depends on the citizenship of your parents oh wow playing a map that i know has and the uk's red mistakes yeah. on it but i wanted to show just generally what this map highlights and so you can see a very obvious trend here with the americas being the part of the world where you have rule of land so if you're born there you're granted citizenship and the reason why you see this there is because this is the part of the world that was conquered by Europeans. So as the Europeans conquered these lands, they decided to make the rules so that if we're born here, we're going to be citizens. But shocking surprise, these same European countries don't offer the same level of citizenship yeah. for people born within their borders. <laughs> but That's zooming wild. in on Europe, this map shows the percentage of the population that is left-handed. Now this is based off of an internet survey, but I would think something like this isn't going to have a whole lot of lies in terms of the survey. 
And as a left-handed person, I do have to say that we are, in fact, the superior homo sapiens. So it doesn't really surprise me at all to see that the wealthier country... It is so weird how there's people who are just left-footed or left-handed. It's just such a weird thing that certain humans just manage to just prefer using their left-sided things. I don't at, at all. I'm the most right-handed and right-footed person in the world. Countries in Europe tend to have more left-handed people, and the poor countries have fewer lefties. And this map is all you will ever need to show with immutable proof that lefties are, in fact, superior humans. And I can tell you a right-handed person did this map because look at some of these countries. What is this? Austria-Hungary, Czechoslovakia? There's also <laughs> Yugoslav, Albania? Yeah, definitely done by a righty. Heading over <laughs> to enough. India, I really find this to be an interesting map. A lot of KFC Americans there. may be surprised just how popular KFC is throughout the world. I'm very surprised. There's, there's a lot of KFCs in India. I mean, India's huge, so to be fair, they're still probably re very spread out, but... Flipping on, there's 36 in Delhi alone. World. I think it's second only to McDonald's in terms of the number of fast food restaurants on Earth. So you can see a large correlation here between the parts of India where you have more vegetarians and fewer KFCs. And even though there are a lot in Uttar Pradesh, there are also 250 million people in that one state. Although I would be yeah. curious to know I just how similar yesterday. KFC is in a place like India. This is another beautiful map that shows the distribution of habitats for various types of turtles. So really nice aesthetics on this map and you can see where all the species come together around New Orleans and the central Gulf Coast. And just a quick use of the Google, all tortoises are turtles but not all turtles are tortoises. We get all kinds of turtles around our house uh -huh. and one thing that's pretty funny is our dog is afraid of turtles. There was one chilling out on our front steps. Our dog just hung out there. He would not come up the steps as long as that turtle was there. But one thing this map does not show is that there's a unique species of turtle found only in Maryland, Testudo the Terrapin. This map shows annual snowfall at the U.S. county level. So no big surprises here in terms of the lake effect snow in the Midwest and Northeast. But even though you see the big story... I wonder where England would rank with this. Probably... Actually, no one says that. It rains. It does actually rain. I mean, it does rain quite a lot, but um, I don't know, to be honest. Probably like somewhere in the blue. It's about some of these big lake effect snow dumps. The actual snow. Oh, no, snowfall, not rainfall. Oh, that's ranking less than one inch, probably, or five to ten inches. There's barely snows the here. You're in central Colorado. But some interesting things to point out. Look at the southeastern corner of Alaska. Not really that much snow. What, what the hell? People are often surprised it doesn't really snow that much in Seattle. And south central New Mexico is as far south as you can go in the U.S. and still find areas with two or three feet of snow per year. This is a nice simple map that I got off of Instagram. So the shape in the middle of the U.S. is the country of Germany. And you can see all of the natural national parks in the U.S. if you add up their total area is actually almost the size of the entire country of Germany. Oh, wow. And most of these national parks are completely wilderness. So imagine somewhere in Europe the size of Germany that is entirely wilderness. Here's a very fascinating <laughs> map based on home insurance claims. I love maps like this that show a very obvious correlation, but it's not at all political. So the obvious correlation here is north-south, so what is going on? I'm not sure exactly the case, but I do know that crime is higher when it's hotter outside. For whatever reason, crime is higher in the summer and when it's warmer. I don't know if heat makes people go crazy or what. Although Washington being second to worst is a bit of an anomaly on this. But whatever the case is, if you want your house to have a less chance of being broken into, move up north. Here's a map I wanted to highlight almost simply because of just how nice it looks. The data is good too. It shows population change in the urban areas for Georgia. I'm not sure why Macon and Columbus were excluded from this, but it shows that the Atlanta metro area is about two-thirds of the urban population of the state. But it also oh, shows that Georgia isn't just Atlanta and a bunch of tiny farm towns either. There are quite a few smaller cities in the state, like Augusta, Savannah, and again, Macon and Columbus. So there is a lot more urban population in the state than you might think. And plus, some of those outer areas of the Atlanta metro area aren't very urban. They are still kind of rural, being sucked in by the, the metro area. But Georgia is a more urban state than people think. And because I'm so anti-political, I wanted to show some anti-political maps. A huge problem we have right now is gerrymandering. So what this creator did was make different gerrymandering maps for each party. So as you can see, you can finagle it either way to get it to be dominant for one party or the other. And the map at the bottom is really how North Carolina's district should be looking. So it makes perfect sense that perhaps the most politically right down the middle state in the country would have five districts for each party with three swings. But yeah, gerrymandering is the devil.
This map shows the railway network in Ireland, 1920. What? So it's got less... There's like less routes a, a hundred years later. What the hell? I wonder why that is. Maybe barely any people live in these areas? That's so interesting. What the hell? And 2020. And no, these maps are not flip-flopped. Ireland has actually regressed in terms of its railway network. So most other parts of Europe are going the opposite direction, going more rail, high-speed rail, but not Ireland. Why? I'm not sure if it's an issue with keeping them maintained or if there just isn't much public desire for rail or whatever, but it certainly isn't topography. But whatever's going on there, the current rail network in Ireland is much less than you would expect for a European country. Here's one that shows the most popular sport in each country per a recent survey. As you can see, ice hockey in Canada, American football in the US, baseball in a lot of the Caribbean and America, um, Central American countries, and even um, South American countries. Now, this is this is still considered Central America, no? Because this is um, what country is this? Suriname, I think. Maybe not. No, I think this is one of these. Is Suriname. This is like Venezuela or something, actually. Um, and then football throughout. Basketball is the most fav the favorite sport in China. I know the NBA was quite big there, but that's a surprise. Ice hockey also in. Is this Finland? I think. Basketball here. This is like Latvia and like Lithuania. I'm pretty sure. Then you got cricket in India, Pakistan, and I don't know what country is next to Pakistan. Australian football in Australia, rugby in a few of these countries. It is interesting how it is so like varied, but obviously the majority is football. You can see football is by far the most popular sport in the world, but you do have a few large countries that have an individual sport. And the thing is, in countries like India, football is so big as well. Obviously cricket's huge there, but football is also huge there. Like they love, I feel like they love their Premier League teams, like Real Madrid and stuff. And all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's still interesting to see. Because obviously cricket's popular in England, to be fair. Or it's very popular that makes the map change because the country's so big. Canada with hockey, China with basketball, and Australia with Aussie <laughs> rules football. You see baseball in Japan, Venezuela, and other parts of Central America and the Caribbean. But I am surprised that South Korea's most popular sport is not baseball. I had never even heard of Gaelic football, but apparently it's popular in Ireland. Cricket is most popular in South Asia, including apparently Afghanistan. And you gotta love that little yellow splotch between India and China for Bhutan. Archery is the most popular sport there, apparently. Archery? You see wrestling for Mongolia, but I thought that also Iran, the most popular sport, was wrestling, but apparently not. And interestingly enough, it's not the most popular sport there, but water polo is incredibly popular in both Hungary and Croatia. And the creator tried hard to have a map without New Zealand, but it barely shows up. Rugby is the most popular sport there. So lastly, I wanted to show what I think is the most beautiful map in this video and really a work of art. This map shows just the paths of cyclones over the country. We call these hurricanes in North America, but this map does not show any land at all. So now I compare that to this topographic map of the country. Oh, wow. So as you can see, just about everywhere in the Philippines has had a cyclone track go directly over it. Flipping as you basically hell. see the outline of the country with just the tracks. So a gorgeous map here, and I wanted to give a shout out to the creator, David Garcia. Damn, interesting. I mean, that is literally like a a replica of the entire country. So it shows literally every part of the country has been hit pretty much. Um, it's kind of crazy to see the progress the channel has seen. I subscribed maybe two years ago and I've seen and uh, years ago. I'm more than happy to see the channel grow. Yeah, he's doing bits now, nearly at 200k. Let's go, man. But yeah, maps of pretty much the US. Hope you enjoyed this. And yeah, that's it. Until next time.